Welcome back to the Hall of Fame College Football Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Watkins. He's the coach, Philip Royball. And if you love college football, you are definitely in the right place. So before you forget, smash that red subscriber button, like our videos, and don't forget to ring the bell so you don't miss one moment of the Hall of Fame College Football Podcast. Coach Roy Ball, welcome back to the show. How's everything going today? It's great to be back, man. Great, great snow day today over here in Hobbs, America. Yeah, man. It was, uh, I looked out this morning and was like, what the hell is this white stuff on the ground? <laughs> so I uh, wasn't expecting that so much, uh, but uh, I guess it could be a lot worse. It could be a lot Absolutely. worse. Absolutely. It was a great day. Yeah. You got a little bit of a snow day. Well, you got stuck in online meetings or what? Yeah, I got stuck in, in a bunch of online meetings, but, you know, yep. I didn't have to go in, so it was kind of nice. Yeah, not too bad. We'd like to welcome back all the people that are in the Mars Jams here. Uh, I think you were talking to us the other day in the comments. We'll have to talk a little bit more, but welcome back to the show, everybody. Glad everybody's here. Uh, we don't have everybody in, but we'll talk about what we're going to get into today on the Hall of Fame College Football Podcast uh, thanks again to everybody tuning into the show once again. Uh, we are always so glad, and, and I'm really honored that you guys uh, show up and, and listen to our content week after week. Uh, it's uh, it's something that we're enjoying. Um, it's fun. Time, <laughs> <laughs> we like to have some fun. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. It's uh, It's been real good. But listen, you know, and I got to say there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that us getting to that thousand mark was a big deal for me to get there as quick as we did. Um, our, our audience has been great with us. And so it's been, uh, it's been nice. Um, folks to on today's show, don't forget, you can always help make sure that we're able to continue bringing you all this content week after week. You can obviously use the, uh, you can support it with the super chat heart, which is right there below on the, on the screen there, or you can hit us up on cash app or Venmo. Obviously you can buy pod merchandise podcast merch, uh, as you saw coming into the, to the deal. That's, uh, we've got some cool shirts and, you know, I was kind of thinking maybe some of you guys are designers or something like that. Is there something that you want to see, uh, on a shirt or on a, on a cap or something like that? I mean, we do the horns down stuff and everything, but. But yeah, we could get we could do something with like a red line through the Notre Dame thing or something. Or what? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, if any of you guys are designers, you want to make a design for for a T-shirt or something like that, maybe we could talk about that as well. Um, but you can always do that. You can always hit the Fanatics page if you just want normal OU gear or whatever your team is. If you're a Cowboys fan, I mean, I know they <coughs> like normal, but uh, you know. Uh, it, there's any any team that you support you can get 65 percent off everything in our store just by using the link above uh so make sure you're doing that as well tonight we will get into uh there's a few things that going on obviously uh you know coach we were talking about, well the first thing is is uh coach venables made another addition to the staff yesterday and uh, this one seems that, to me, we were talking about a little bit off air, but I, I feel good about the fact that that um, a lot of the issues that we were seeing on defense and stuff like that was missed gap assignments, things like that. Well, James Skowski, Skowski was one of the better linebackers at Clemson that he had as far as, I mean, he was always around the football, um, seemed to really understand. And, of course, he went back as like a, he he was back as a grad assistant anyway as well, um, and with the fact that Coach Venables has been coaching the linebackers still, uh, or he did during the first season, how big of a thing do you feel like this is to bring in a guy that's it's that familiar with your system, was a linebacker in your system, to take some of that pressure off of of Coach V and allow him to be more of a you know full team manager. You know, Jason, that <clears throat> that that's a must. And you know, well, you and I talked about this a little bit earlier, but I, I'm loving that that Venables is focusing on that defense, fixing that defense and the issues that they've had defensively, not only right. through recruiting, but through getting some coaches in there that know his scheme. Obviously, 
you know, he played for Venables. Mm -hmm. And I, I, that's going to bring a lot to the table because Venables is a head coach, guys. That guy doesn't have time to go spend a lot of time in, in you know, in the meeting rooms and watching film and, and, right. and doing those things and drills. <clears throat> and so having somebody that already knows your scheme, because <clears throat> we, we've seen it before too, is that, you know, you get to see all the, the gaps that were missed in ball games defensively. Gap and dude, and it, I mean, you threw five, five games that were lost by seven or less points, four Gap of them by three. Is a nightmare. And, yeah. and, and, and the three, three, five, I'll tell you this, the, the three, three, five is a defense. that's not geared around gap control right. because they're, you know, they're, they're trying to, uh, they're using confusion. You know, that's, one of the things that they do, but, but again, you still have to get people in gaps. I've run the three, three, five, you know, a, a lot of people have gone to the three, three, five because of the, of the spread offenses. Correct. Uh, but you better have some hellacious athletes up there in the nose and the tackles because mm. you only got three down linemen. Uh, right, right. And, then, and, and that then was the problem. Linebacker that they got to play defensive end. They've got to play outside linebacker and they have to play secondary in a lot of that scheme. And so those two better be some real studs. So, but, but I, I'm excited. I, I, you know, not that I'm excited for OU to be successful, but I'm excited to see that Venables is getting that done and accomplished. And I think doing the things that he's trying to get done in there, you know, to have such a, one and you you brought up you got to have studs, and we've talked about it. You know, watching that that uh, the All American Bowl in San Antonio, yeah. you know, you had two and, and really the three guys that that were there for the defense. You know, you also had uh, Seth was there on the offensive line, but you had three guys on the defenses, and they all really made an impact. Or you know, first of all, you couldn't throw on Macari. He and he's a big kid for a, for a corner at six foot one, two hundred pounds. But then you also Samuel Omosijo from uh, Crandall. Yeah, uh, man, this kid continues to impress as well. Obviously, you've got some guys that played in the Under Armour game as well that are gonna. You figure they're gonna. I mean, obviously with Adabawari, uh, he climbed all the way to the one. You know, one of the top five spots in the country uh, from that edge position because of the pounds he put on and the quickness that he has, he was all over the field. That's going to be big on that line. But Samuel, well, and, to me, Samuel is important because as a linebacker, he showed that he could cover running backs. He was covering tight ends. Yes. He was, I mean, he was able to, you know, play as a, like another safety even as well and, and, and get some pressure on the quarterback at times too. And then for Josiah Wagner, he's going to be another corner, and he's not as big as as Macari is, but he was in making big hits. Sure, and well, around and the football, the Jason. That's the that's the strength of that three three five defense. And I, I Oklahoma's always had great speed uh, right. on both sides of the ball, uh, right. and that's one of the strengths of, of, of that. And that's why it causes the confusion. To the offensive line, not uh, sure where the pressure is coming from. Exactly, and and it's the the flexibility piece is another big part of that defense because you can mm -hmm. do so many things. You got to be careful you don't do too much, right? Because uh, so you don't want to fill their head with too much where they're not playing yes. with speed, right? Right. You want to play them. They want to play fast. Yes. Right. Right. And see, and if you think about those, the, I mean, obviously, you, you Notre Dame's been playing an ACC schedule for a while where they played Clemson every year now for a long time, right? Absolutely. And Absolutely. so to you've seen this defense at its best when they were winning national championships and beating Alabama. And they had guys that, you know, and to me, almost Seahawk kind of reminded you of the kid that uh, went to the Cardinals um, – that he was that linebacker safety hybrid guy. And um, and I'm, I'm forgetting his name now, but the dude's a stud, you know? 
and yeah. he went early, early. But they've had a bunch of guys that have been all Americans on that offense on the defensive line. Line, yes. you know, in twenty in twenty twenty, they had what three all Americans that all went in the top like thirteen, right? You know, well, and, and that's uh, another thing, Jason. You know, and <clears throat> obviously part of the weakness to that is with those Isaiah three Simmons, down linemen. Yeah. It's a little bit tougher to get pass rush on the quarterback, but that's where those that's where those outside linebackers come in with twists and stunts and right. Uh, that thing right. And like I don't practice. even think that Isaiah's been as good in the league as he was, and he's a, as great of an athlete as he is. I haven't. I think he's yeah. had some injury issues too, but but that guy was man. He was a disruptor, and those. I mean, having those dudes, like you said, it's and that's why it's been so important th- this recruiting class. You know, it it was very heavy on defense. The portal has been very heavy on defense. You know, uh, we've talked at length about about the guys they're bringing in. Obviously, you would have liked to have maybe seen a few more uh, defensive tackle type guys. Uh, but uh, you know, yeah, Coach uh, Outlaw, we're going to get into that in just a second. I'm going to finish this this little quick convo about about him, and then we're in that. But listen, as far as that goes, like you know. In order to get, but I just felt like Stowski's one of those guys that he was kind of, he always seemed to be around the football and always seemed to be in the right place at the right time. And so, and and he just played. I mean, it hadn't been that long. He can be out there and kind of get them going. I really feel the same way about Miguel Chavis as far as being the defensive end coach because he was a hell of a player. Right, you know? right. Well, and you, um, got, you got some guys that, you know, they haven't been coaching a long time, but they're still – and they're going to connect a lot better with the players at, at, they have. at this yeah. stage in their career. Well, Miguel's been uh, doing a great job on the recruiting trail because he, yeah, I mean, absolutely. that's him at the start of the show that says, let's go. You know I mean? They, yeah. The kids love him. So, you know, absolutely. it's been a good thing for him, but I feel like with this, this is another one of the, it's the right kind of hire if you're, and, and listen, let's talk. I mean, we can even talk a little bit about the receiver coach that they got in too. Now he hasn't really done much on the trail yet, but, um, you know, but you know he's a good recruiter. We were talking about him last week. He he was also at Skyline for a while, uh, like you were. Um, he knows that the you know the the Metroplex. So and that's yeah. important for some of these guys, you know, for recruiting and everything else. But but on top of that, everything I've heard from McGuire and all them, they were upset that he left. Right. Um, you know, yeah. So. I feel like yeah, I feel like uh, Skalski is gonna. It's gonna be a good move. For, I, I think it was a re- it was a good move on the part of Venables to do that. Freeze him up a little bit. He doesn't have to put in so much time to teaching the scheme as much. 